Today we have a really special one to show you. Look at how powerful this is. You just barely tap the nut, bam. Throughout human history, mice and rats have invaded people's homes, spread disease, and destroyed food. And that means nearly every culture that ever existed has developed their own mouse and rat traps. There must be thousands and thousands of different designs. And today for Mouse Trap Monday, we're gonna test out a very old and powerful style mouse trap from Mongolia. Now I've never seen this style mouse trap before, and I first learned about it from a YouTube viewer named Peter. He recently visited the Inner Mongolia Museum in China. There they had a display of different artifacts, including mouse traps. So Peter took a bunch of photos and sent them to me. One thing I like so much about these style mouse traps is they're basically made out of junk. Whatever the person had on hand, metal strapping that's very springy, provides the force for the trap. Also wire, string, and wood. Now one of the original mouse traps was made out of a stick. It still had the bark on it, and down below was carved a notch. In that notch were two lower pieces of wood, a kill bar and a support. They were attached with wire through here. They made a guide wire that went up through the post, and on the other side it stuck out. That's for the trigger system. Now attached to the kill bar was a toggle with string. To set it, we'll pull this back and wrap that toggle around. Now there's a second wire down here and the toggle doesn't hit it. But when you put a nut right here, that wedges in and sets the trap. That way you can place it along the wall. The mouse will stick his head through there, try to get the bait. And when it does, ah, it gets caught right on its neck. The museum also had another trap that's basically the same. It was made out of wood but it still has a spring steel and the guide wire and the toggle stick in back. To set it, we'll pull this up, wrap it around, and place our bait. Again, the mouse will stick his head in there, grab the nut, and when it does, it comes down on it. That bent metal makes a very powerful trap. Let's go set him up in the barn with motion cameras and see if we can catch some wild mice. Well, two different mice took the bait and headed towards the light. That metal spring is powerful, and the trigger system's very sensitive. For being made out of junk, the trap worked well. The biggest flaw is you have to place it along a wall. Otherwise, the mouse will come around and steal the bait without getting caught. But overall, there's better mouse traps out there. Because we caught mice with it, I'll give it a three out of five mouse trap Monday mice. And I'm gonna take the two mice we caught in these traps and feed them to wild animals. Let's go set up the motion cameras at the beaver dam and see what comes along and has a mouse snack.
Well, no more beavers at the beaver dam. It's summertime, it's hot outside, and the water's drying up, so they moved on. But what did come by was two black-tailed deer, a doe and fawn. They smelled that dead mouse, checked it out a while, then day and night raccoons came by, but they didn't want the dead mouse either. After a few days, it got really smelly, and a turkey vulture came down and gobbled it up. So the turkey vulture got the meal. I've been ending my videos with question and answer time. I love the comments people leave, so let's answer a few. The first one's from Ariana. She says, also, I love your wife's cooking bits. If you have more unique family recipes, maybe you can make that a feature. Thanks, Ariana, for asking the question. I haven't posted a video in quite a while featuring my wife. There's a reason for that. She's an amazing cook. She's great on camera. She's great on YouTube. The problem is the comments. People leave the most nasty comments about her appearance, what they'd like to do to her. And I got really angry. I'm protective of my wife and family, and I just didn't want those comments being put online. Next comment says, turkey vultures had the mouse kebabs. Now the reason I included this comment is I love turkey vultures. They'll fly down and eat the dead mice. The problem is, usually when I feature a turkey vulture, that video gets demonetized. There's something offensive with YouTube about vultures eating animals. So I have to be really selective in how I show turkey vultures eating. Now here's a comment about trapping moles. It says, moles are useful carnivores. They eat pests, aerate the soil, and the holes are sometimes reused by bumblebees. I can't understand why people kill them. Well, this is correct. Moles are not rodents. They mostly eat worms and invertebrates, and they do aerate the soil. My biggest problems when they dig up the lawn, when I'm mowing the grass, it makes a dust cloud, hits the mower blades. I don't mind having moles around. They're pretty cool animals, just as long as they're not in my yard where I have to mow. And my final comment is from Edwin. It's on the A18 squirrel trap. It says, how can you kill such a beautiful creature? You suck, and he doesn't want to subscribe anymore. So squirrels can be such a huge problem, very costly, especially ground squirrels. The squirrels I trapped in that video were in a building. They chew on wires, they get in vehicles. For some reason, they love to pull the firewall down. And they've caused so much damage, thousands of dollars in damage with squirrels. So I don't have any problem killing squirrels that are pests. Now, one exception is silver gray squirrels. Where I live in this state, they're a game animal. There's a hunting season, it's strictly regulated. You need a hunting license. You can't just trap them. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider clicking the button right here. I've posted over 550 videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday and Friday. So if you want to see how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.